Welcome back to Newsmakers. We are with Andrew Gunn, Martin Van Vanen and Jim Tully. Well, the well-tailored suit and the crocodile grin is back on the stump. Winston Peters pressed the flesh in North Canterbury and delivered a tub-thumping speech, New Zealand for sale, uh, on Tuesday. Before we zone in about his concerns about the state of the aged care industry in general terms, what do you make of his Lazarus-like powers? Do you believe he will rise again next year, Jim? Well, he'll certainly give everything he can, and aided by Michael Laws, that may well happen. Um, I mean, he's a political animal, he loves that environment. I'm sure he's on withdrawal symptoms having been out of Parliament. So at the first opportunity, yep, he's back. Has National left room on the spectrum for this kind of phenomena to unfold, the return of Winston? Well, I don't think you need to, to uh, leave room for a phenomena like Winston. Uh, he's the sort of guy that will exploit um, some holes himself. And um, the tragedy is that there will always be um, a section of the population that will fall for it. And so, um, yes, I can, I can see him reviving New Zealand First and, and um, perhaps even New Zealand First in Parliament again uh, next year with five or six seats. Possibly sharing the reins of power? John oh, God Keyes. forbid, I don't want to go there, I don't want to go there, Mike. No. <laughs> I'm not, going to go, I'm not even going to contemplate that. <laughs> <laughs> Too much to contemplate. Andrew, do you believe Winston will be back in Parliament next year? Oh, listen, if I knew that, I'd be chief. But um, uh, I have to say I have a, a certain, not a fondness is the wrong word, but just that, that complete old-fashioned sort of Muldoonist politics. Because mm -hmm. if you look at someone like John Key, he's, he's um, made a forte out of this inclusiveness, which I'm all for. I mean, I think he presents very well as someone who tries to, the, the big tent and the, the big society, to borrow a slogan, even though actually on, in various of his ministers are chipping away at things like working conditions and mining and things, but he, he's about that. But Winston Peters is really old fashioned, us versus them, you know, find mm. someone to blame and mm. pick that scab. And, and you've uh, missed that combative well, I'm not saying side, I've, have you? I've <laughs> missed it, but it just, it just brings up memories of the, these days, that the major parties particular try, as you say, try to cover the centre and then move out. But mm. he's just that old style of, um, yeah. The fact that there was the, uh, the Morgan poll out just a few days ago that shows New Zealand First is right on the mm. cusp of mm. breaking through that magic 5% mark. Mm. I mean, it shows you how fluid, dare I say, fickle the electorate can be, doesn't it? Well, they need a, they need a, I think they need a seat, though, don't they? Mm. And um, could, could, could Winston take Tauranga again? No, I, I doubt it somehow, but mm. maybe Michael Laws and, and Whanganui. Yeah. What the, a combination. <laughs> <laughs> oh. um, the aged care sector, obviously foreign ownership is a, is a biggie for Winston. And then you've got the issue of the standard of care in our facilities. And then, of course, the hideous rates of pay to caregivers. Some of those issues will be seen as legitimate concerns, won't they? You're asking me because I'm the oldest here. <laughs> Wasn't meant to be like that, Jim. <laughs> the, um, I mean... I think we have to recognise that baby boomers like myself um, into their mid-60s are going to be a really important constituency because we are going to be voters. We will vote. Mm. Um, we're going to be educated voters um, and we're the kind of people who already be quite active in this. And so issues around that generation and how we care for them and, and the provision that we make for them I think is going to be a really big issue over the next five, ten years. And you know we have to recognise that you know, we have options. Do we put people in rest homes, or do we find provision to be able to enable them to stay at home, which is where most of them want to be, so long as they're ambulant, mm. and also a cheaper option. So it seems to me that you know Winston's tapping into something, but it, it's actually hinting at a much, much bigger issue. Yes. I got an email from a, a woman who works as a caregiver. She has for 30 years for a very large healthcare provider in Christchurch. No prices for guessing who. And she made the point to me in an email that she has managed to get a qualification in everything she possibly could applicable to her job. Everything. And she's still on $14.80 an hour. And she's 30 years in this job. I mean, that is quite indecent, isn't it? Yeah, it's, it's outrageous. And, and this is an issue that Winston could have actually made some ground on, but he's chosen to, to um, actually raise two issues. One is foreign ownership, mm. because obviously he can, he can, he's picked up a vibe that New Zealanders aren't that comfortable about uh, foreigners buying land and also, um, uh, and also New Zealand businesses. So he's, he's raised that one, but then he's raised the issue of aged care. Now, 
this is, you know, the, the issue of aged care has been around for a long time, and, and I'm sure there are outrages throughout the whole country. But Winston has had ample opportunity to do something about that, and now he raises it a year before the election. So um, it's also transparent, isn't it? You've got to love the gall, though, don't you? Well, no, don't gall, no, though. No, no, I don't love the gall. Um, uh, I'm like, just terrified. I'd like, no, I'd like to see an operation to remove the gall. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let me ask you about Chris Carter. Um, do you believe this two months leave is just a oh so convenient solution for all concerned, Andrew? Yeah, there seems to be a lot of code talked about what's going on here. Is mm. he actually? Um, is he actually ill or not, or is it like gardening leave, really? Mm. And and should he be? I must say, good old good old Phil Goff, who can tend towards the old-fashioned politics sometimes. He rather did bring in the sledgehammer when he did the old. I'm no psychiatrist, but <laughs> sort of like, it's like he might as well say, "Hey, it's not up to me to say if he's nutty as a fruitcake." Um, so I, it, it does it does seem strange that you can that you can you know uh, one day be making. What, what seems to me to be a lucid, not that I agree with this case against Phil Goff, but it seemed to be a loose, lucid case yeah. if bumblingly um, executed. executed. Mm. Yes. And the next day saying, oh, I'm, I'm sick, I have to just go, go away off. for two. two. Mm. That, it seems odd to me. Is this going to be a recurring theme to haunt Labour for the next year or so, or will the media forget about Chris Carter? I think they'll forget about him. I think we can see that they weren't taking it that seriously because you had the code phrases, under pressure, erratic behaviour and so forth. If they really felt that what he was saying was a goer, then they would have hung in there a lot more. I think people recognise that the man is not well mm. and therefore they covered it while they covered it, but I don't believe for one moment that the conventional wisdom in the press gallery is that this was a serious, you know, Mm. possibility, I think they recognise that this guy is, quotes, under pressure, which to me means he's not well. Yeah. How do you see it, Martin? Well, it, remind, it reminded me a bit of those, um, of the Soviet era where a dissident was sent off to a mental hospital to uh, to come to his senses. Mm -hmm. So I wondered about that in, in, with uh, Chris. But I, I don't know, I mean, I'm, I, call, me a, call me a cynic, but... Um, yep, you're a cynic. <laughs> may, maybe, maybe... Um, they, they would like to get rid of them, but they're think, thinking about a backlash in Te Ata and um, maybe, maybe he, um, maybe they, that's a seat they, they might lose with some, somebody else. So I'm sure there are other factors go, going into the considerations here. Yeah. But they've kicked for touch. I mean, that's what they've done, haven't they? They've kicked for touch and thought, well, right, we'll sort this guy out later on. But I, I would say Chris Carter's political career is over, really. He'll never be in Cabinet again. Yeah. Let's see what George Hawkins has planning and plotting in the wings. Um, that could be the next story. Coming up very shortly, we'll have a look at Hone Hadaweta's world view on multi-ethnic relationships. Also, we'll uh, preview the Bledisloe and um, share a few comments about Robbie Deans and how long is he going to be around as coach. Do stay with us.